Hi everybody, this is a tour of my micro maple sugaring operation. This is the shed, the sheep barn. It's got a picture of this carving of the sheep on the door. Sculpture, I guess. As it was originally a sheep barn when Andrew built the place. At the back I've got two 1,000 liter totes. One's full on the way down and one's empty waiting for more sap which hopefully I'll get this year. A couple of stands the Mennonites built for me. The two stacks, the front stack or the one on your left is the steam stack, the one on the right is the heat stack where the firewood smoke comes from. Let's walk around the front. Lovely. The third tote is just for overflow or for spare capacity. It has to be pumped from the back front of the shed to the back. And that's the evaporator. Built by Smoky Lake Maple Products in Wisconsin. The front pan is the syrup pan, where the finished product is actually boiled to completion. In the back is the sap pan. The sap comes in from those two totes in the back of the building through this piping into the first pan here, which is about 66 inches long, has 7 inch raised flues, and the syrup level, the sap level, is kept at about one inch above that. It's got a hood that captures the steam, funnels it out to the stack on the top of the building, and some doors which you can see what's going on. That's pipes you're looking at are preheating pipes. So the sap that comes into the back goes through those pipes before it drops into the syrup, the sap pan. So we'll go around the other side of the evaporator. Pipes that I showed you, which are on this side, you can still see there. The lights feed in through this pipe here, down into a level controller that controls the level of the sap in the sap pan at about one and a half inches above the top level of the flues. It's a two-pass sap pan, so the sap flows to the back of the pan, and through an opening at the back of the pan, it pulls across to the other side where we started. And then moves along the front of the pan, this level, this is another level controller, and it controls the sap flow from the sap pan to the syrup pan through this piping. And it's maintained at a level of two inches above the bottom of the syrup pan which again is the front pan. A lot of convoluted valving here, I'll explain later on. The syrup pan is a four pass pan, which means that the sap goes into one of these four channels 
and sequentially moves through each of them until it gets to the last channel, which is the one that's boiling the highest, it has the highest density of syrup. These temperature gauges show the entry temperature and the final temperature of the syrup in the syrup pan. One on the left shows the temperature in the first channel, and the, and the gauge on the right shows the temperature in the right channel. When the temperature rises to a certain point, which is controlled electronically, in this fancy piece of electronics, the gauge on the right, or the dial the LED readouts on the right, show that it's set for 217.4 degrees. Then the temperature that's actually being measured above it, currently 215.4, reaches 217.4. black thing is a valve, and it opens and automatically pours the syrup in through a filter into this five gallon milk jug. Currently, I'm running at about one gallon of syrup, finished syrup in an hour. So the valve, when it reaches temperature, starts pouring off incrementally. I might pour off a quarter liter at a time, shut off as the temperature falls below the set point, opens again when it hits the set point. Another exciting point. This is an airtight system of forced air. So the stock temperature, which is the pipe there, goes up from the ceiling where the exhaust heat goes through from the firewood. It's monitoring it and it's about 796 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, and it's pressurizing let's say this fan down here is turned on and it's pushing air into an otherwise airtight firebox called an arch. I'm going to turn the fan off so that we can open the firebox, otherwise it may get seared with hot air and ash. Put on these very high temperature gloves. The leather that go way up to show you what looks like inside. And that's the firebox, and from here I'm about three and a half feet away. I can barely hold this thing. We stoke that firebox every six minutes, and since this video is eight minutes and running, the buzzer on my intelligent watch has already gone off. That's the next load of wood I'm going to put in as soon as I shut off this video. So far, I've made two five gallon pails of syrup. Both finished to 66 and 67% respectively, which is the finished percentage of syrup. So this is doing really well. For this, I had to take the syrup up to 60% and then finish it in a separate tank, which I'll still use, but just for bottom. And this is the rest of the shed. Clean it every morning before I fire up. And that's my story, so I better get back and stoke the firebox.